right, man. We're going live, man. Uh, I got Owen on the line already. I got Brian on the line. Thank you guys for showing up. Uh, let me see. Viet Fong. Hello, Victor from Vietnam. Boom. Welcome from Vietnam. Craig Max in the house. Is like the actual Craig Mac. What a Craig Max with an S, man. Thank you for joining me. Hey, before I get started, uh, I wanted to show you guys what was on the website in case you haven't visited the Sales Velocity Academy. So the one course I want to highlight tonight, because I'm going to do this every night, just highlight one of the courses. So if you go into this, the salesvelocityacademy.com, right? If you go into the foundational courses right here, foundational, uh, advanced, and then mastery, here are all the different courses in this section right here. The one I want to emphasize today is this one right here, getting past the gatekeeper. So I get this question a lot about how do I, you know, handle cold calling and the gatekeeper. So once you go into the course, by the way, there's always a free preview that you can actually watch the video. I won't hit that now. But then right below, you can actually see what's actually in the actual course. So this one has 11 videos. And let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. And then this one has an association script, different scripts that I've put together that you can use to get past the gatekeeper. So I wanted to highlight that, that if you go again to the Sales Velocity Academy, uh, every time I do this, I'm gonna just highlight one. I love that one, that's a great program. Back here, and you guys are chiming in. Tell me where you're from. I'm gonna like turn this off right now and I'll put the board back up. And I'm super excited about today because today we're gonna talk about, bam, show me the money. Vincent Lewis from Trinidad Tobago, man. Let's get some names up here, man, and where you're from. Uh, let me see, we got Mia Knox, she's back. Vincent Lewis, man, New Jersey in the house right there. We got Felix, or do you say Felix? Good evening, Victor. It's an honor to be a follower of the moneymaker. Hey, man, let's make money. You're the moneymaker. New Jersey in the house. We got my man, Vincent Lewis. We got Mia Knox, Trinidad Tobago again. Boom, Bridget, you're back. Nice to have you back, Bridget. Victor, show me the money, the power within, 2820. Uh, Michael Mason from Phoenix, Arizona. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. I missed my eye. Let me see. Brian got up here early, man. You were first on the block, Brian. Thank you very much, man. Owen R. Schrock. Just go check him out, man. That's all I'll tell you. And again, my man from Vietnam, man. Thank you for joining me. Who else we got down here? Sunny San Diego. Love San Diego. Too expensive. And then my man. No show is ever complete without Victor Tan. And I'm going to have to add Brian in there because Brian's just always out here, man. Brian, so thank you, Brian, as well. And again, Power Within. Uh, Hi, right back at gotcha. you. North Carolina in the house. Oh, we got another San Diego in the house. I love it, man. Hello from, I love, like I said, man, San Diego is just beautiful, man. What software do you use to stream, man? Love that. I use something called Ecamm Live. And so it's E, uh, let me just change the marker. It's a really powerful software, man. E Cam Live. That's the software right there, man. Cool. And so, Brian says, Victor Tan is the man. I think you're right, man. And he probably, he'll probably probably give you a shout out right back, man. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, we're going to talk money because I promised on the last one I would talk about um, uh, compensation plans. Luigi Giovanetti. Dude, that is so cool. You must love saying your name. Boston Mass in the house, man. So, uh... You got me smiling, man. Way to go, Felix, man. That's the way it should be, man. Let's try to enjoy this thing called life, man. A. Marshall, Trinidad in the house. All right, man. So I, I got some notes written out. And so it's Thursday. I'm well aware that we're about to cruise. For those of you here in the U.S., we're about to cruise into the uh, holiday weekend here, uh, July 4th, right? We celebrate that Independence Day for us. And so I'm going to try to keep this one short, but I don't know. You guys never let me keep it short. This is what I'm discovering. I want to go short, but you guys just keep asking a bunch of questions. And my wife gets mad and, you know, how that goes. But anyway, so, all right, let's get started. Let's talk about this right here. And I'm going to break this up into three sections, right? It's really cool. But I, I think if you're a manager, you're going to love this, right? Because Or you own a business and you want to pay your salespeople. But if you're a salesperson, how much should you be making? We're going to look at some numbers. I got some data for you, man. So it's either show me the money or how much should you be paying other people if you have salespeople. I'm going to put together a compensation plan for you, something I think works. And then how much, if you're a salesperson, should you be getting paid? So if you're on the management side, how much should I pay, Victor? If you're on the sales side, man, how much should they be paying me, Victor? And remember, every salesperson, every salesperson is a capitalist. You know what I mean about a capitalist? I'm talking to Milton Friedman. 
Heilbronner, Ayn Rand type of capitalist because capitalism is a great system. I don't care what anybody says. Find me a better system. Let's talk about it. But there hasn't been one yet. Here's what capitalism is in my words. And well, it should be my words. I got this from Ayn Rand. And she said, in a, in a true capitalistic society, it's always about value for value. If I give you value, there's nothing wrong with me exchanging that value for value where it's a win-win. So I've always loved the phrase value for value. So I joke about capitalism, but I mean it from that, you know, that point of view. I don't like crony capitalism. Crony capitalism is when you distort capitalism and it's not value for value. It's like companies who take advantage of people, maybe take advantage of the environment. In other words, they don't treat it well. That's crony capitalism, okay? I'm talking about real capitalism where you and I engage in an exchange of value and we're both that much better. That to me is the ideal capitalism. All right, now, so let's get into, first I'm gonna give you the three basic models. Not that hard, but let's cover the three basic models and then we can have a discussion. Then I'm gonna talk about compensation plans. So I'll give you three models right here. So let me put this back here. I'll give you three models that you can use to pay, right? And we'll talk about the pros and cons, that's one. Two, we'll build a comp plan, a compensation plan, right? And then let's talk about B-A-G-S, bags owe money. And I'll tell you what bags owe money means towards the end. See what I did there? I left you hanging on the last one. You see how I did that? Always do that in the presentation. It holds their attention. Anyway, just a tip. All right, let me see. Vincent says, we should be paying you, Victor. Thank you, brother. Again, the only payment I ask is that you share this stream with at least one person. That's it, just share it with one person, man. That'd be cool. All right, so let's talk about the three models. The three models is, and this is just a foundation, and this is something you already know, but let's, let's also walk through it slowly and let's discuss it. Because remember, is money a motivator? Yes or no? Give me that, is money a motivator? Yes or no? Give me a one if it's a yes. Give me a zero if it's a no. Is money a motivator? I'm waiting. Is money a motivator? One or zero? One, yes it is, Victor. Zero, no it ain't. One, yes it is. Zero, no it ain't. Love a cup of tea is in the house, she says one. All right, if anybody puts zero, please leave this live stream now. <laughs> just leave. No, don't leave, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. The thing is, money is a motivator, but the trick is obviously it isn't the only motivator. Can we agree on that? And I really hate, I really hate when people say, Victor, it's not about the money. It's never really about the money, you know, because money will never make you happy. <laughs> you ever hear that? Money won't make you happy, Victor. It just won't guarantee your happiness. Well, here's one thing money will always guarantee you. Listen carefully. Money will always guarantee you this. That's what money guarantees you. Options. And we love options. Think about it. When you're making money, you have options. In fact, you have the option to be happy or not. You have the option of putting your kid into public school or private school. You have the option of paying cash or leasing the thing. You have an option of buying the house. Bigger one, smaller one, you have options, right? And so that's what money really does. It gives you options. You wanna help a family member out? You have options, right? When you don't have money, you don't have options. Now, I always say that money is important, but also the environment and the context matters. And we can talk about that later, but let's always keep in mind, money matters. So, okay, when somebody says, Victor, money won't make you happy, I want you to reply, but money will guarantee you options. And that's what we all want. So let's go with the options. Now, so the first, Three ways to pay somebody. Now let's be a manager, we're gonna pay, and then let's talk about this. So the first one, as you know, is obviously the base salary, right? And I'm gonna show you some numbers. I think it's gonna be really interesting, is base salary. You pay somebody a base salary, right? And so when you pay somebody a base salary, let me just do this again here. Let me just erase this, because I wanna do something. I wanna be able to write more. Let's say base salary. You guys can read that, right? Base salary. Now, you guys help me out. If I had to write, a Right here, what are the, let me just write here, split this one down the middle, and let's do it like this. Pros and the cons. What is the pro of paying somebody a base salary? What's the pro? What's the big pro of paying somebody a base salary? What's the big, yeah, that's why it's good, right? Why is that? 
there's several reasons. Help me out here. One is, I think you'll attract a lot of people. Attract people. You know, in other words, you'll attract people to want to work for you. It's a, somebody wrote, Luigi, it's a fixed amount, but that fixed amount means it reduces, and I'll just put a down arrow, it reduces anxiety, right? Because people, again, it reduces anxiety, and Tamiya would sell it, it's, uh, said it, it's obviously offering you, boom, right there, Tamiya, stability, right? And that's what people want. So if I can reduce anxiety, also I'll use your words, Tamiya, stability, you know, again, I know what's coming in, it kind of reduces my nervousness, right? And so if you think about that, that's really powerful, right? If you could reduce that type of anxiety. Now on top of that, what else do you think happens? Shows good faith. Jenna, I like that, man. I like that. It shows good faith. My collar's messing with me. It shows good faith, right? And I love that. So this is good. Now, tell me what the cons are. What are the cons? Again, you're a manager. You're hiring somebody on a base salary. What are the cons? What are the cons? All right? And I would say now, well, this person is obviously an employee now, right? With a base salary. So there's some tax implications there. What else you guys got? Ooh. Brian, look at that. Brian chiming in big time here. Limited. The con is that they're limited to that. That's all they get. Limited. And believe it or not, some people are okay with that. Will they be worth the money, right? That's the con. Can they really pony up and will they be worth that money, right? And also, can we add this? Let me just take uh, that note down. Also, can we add this one? That they may not be as motivated to want to sell because they got a base salary. So can we just add the word maybe complacency? They will become complacent over time. So that could be a problem, right? So this one right here, what concerns me about this one is that I think motivation over time just not might be a little low. My theory, you get the idea. All right, so that's one. Now the other one obviously is what? Let's go to the other extreme. And that is commission one more S, only. Now, commission only, what's the pro? What's the pro of commission only? What's the big pro? We'll go back to what Brian said, unlimited, right? Unlimited money, there's no limit to how much you can make. That's what I love about that, that's the big one. When you look at commission, there's, it's unlimited. You can make as much as you want. What else? What else do you think? That's the big one, isn't it? Let's go to the hearts, the easy side. What's the con of commission only? What's the con of commission only? Con of commission only. What do you think it is? How about this? How about one is that if it's commission only, you can scare off a lot of people, scare off. And one could argue, well, we'll probably scare off people who can't sell. Not necessarily, there might be some good salespeople because what happens is you don't know how long it's gonna to take to get your first deal. So not only are you gonna scare them off, uh, again, high anxiety. Anxiety will be high right? And they'll feel the pressure of selling, that they have to sell something. And when people are commission only and they feel the pressure to sell, one of the things I've seen, I'm not saying everybody does this, is that let's just say their morals and ethics tend to bend a little bit. They tend to bend the truth a little bit because they get desperate. So the thing that concerns me here is also one of ethics, right? That people just say anything just to actually try to make the money. The upside is you can make money. You can make as much money as you want. The downside is it creates anxiety. It's, it's harder to attract people. And at the end of the day, you know, they might start bending the truth a little bit just to make something happen because they get desperate. I would also add that if you're a manager and you're doing commission only, you're going to have, and I think Angel Del Cordero says it, there's pressure, right, Angel? And then also that means you're going to have a high churn rate. You're going to have a high churn rate. In other words, you're going to be losing a lot of people because if, if after two or three months they're not making money, they're going to leave, right? Because there's no base salary. Let's say this person has a family, they're going to leave. So now you've got to retrain those people. Now keep in mind that if I hire somebody and I train them for two months, if that, let's say one month, and then they spend another month or two and then they decide to quit after month three, I've got to start the whole process all over again. But not only did I lose three months, that's three months of potential. So the opportunity cost is really like I'm out six months if that makes any sense, because I just lost three months and the person left. Now I got to spend another three months. So that's six months of lost productivity. So that's the downside of using commission. So the combination obviously is base plus commission, right? And I think the base plus commission kind of gives you the best of both worlds, right? On the pro side, again, 
you can have unlimited wealth plus stability right there, right? And if you got a good plan, this becomes a very attractive plan. The con, I don't, can you think of any cons for a base plus commission? Can you think of any cons? I want to hear if you got any cons on base plus commission. What do you got? Base plus commission. Is there a con to that one? I haven't been able to find a good one. You know, I haven't been able, I mean, the cost of, the only thing I can think of is your cost of sales go up, right? Your cost of sales is what it costs you to pay somebody actually go up. That's the big one. But again, if we put together a good compensation plan, the cost of, you know, you've heard of the phrase COS, and that's the cost of selling a product, right? So that includes a salesperson, could sometimes include a marketing budget, whatever it may be. So there's cost of goods, what it costs to manufacture a product, cost of sales, what it costs to sell a product. So when you have base plus commission, because you're not paying base plus commission, obviously your cost of sales is going to go up. And depending on which market you're in, you know, the cost of sales could be anywhere from 10 to 15% to maybe 20 to 30%. So it really depends. So that's the only downside. So anyway, if I were you and I were running a business, I definitely would always stay here. I love this model right here, right? But if you're selling luxury items, like for example, uh, like high-end luxury items, like real estate agents, right? For example, real estate agents live off what? Commission, right? And so that's why for a real estate agent, a real estate person to get started, Obviously, there has to be a lot of investment in the marketing side just to generate some leads, some prospects before there's any real payout. But again, the upside of commission only is that, man, once you score, like if you're in San Diego or you're in California and you're selling houses there, you can just sell a few houses and you're going to make it some big bank. So again, it's always a trade-off. So people always say, what's the best model? It really depends on what you're selling. But if I say, what's the best model on average across different sectors of the market, it would have to be the base plus commission. Now, so let's say you go with base plus commission. Now, again, what we want to do is set up a plan where we want to push people, right? We don't want to pay them too much where they get lazy, but we want to pay them enough to stay motivated and get more deals. So now let's talk about, these are the three models. Let's go with the bottom one right here. And now I'm going to go with how do we structure a compensation plan? This is pretty straightforward. You can figure out what the average base salary is. Go to one of the websites where you can find average salaries. You can figure that out. On a commission, depending on your product or service, you can figure out what the commissions are that you are willing to pay out or receive. But let's talk about this one because this is probably the most common one when it comes to selling. And then I'm going to show you some data. I think it's really interesting. In fact, I'm going to pull up this piece of data I found. Now, this is at the end of 2018, so it's a little over a year old, this data. But nonetheless, it's pretty good. So... Uh, where is it at? Not you, Angel. I love you. Right there. So look at these companies. These are technology companies, right? And so look at the different companies. you got Aptus right here at the top. Average salary is $93,000. And then the additional, average additional pay, which I have to assume is a compensation plan or program, is like $100,000. Ooh, 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 that's a good job. So total compensation on average is about 175,000 if you work for Aptus. Now, what struck me as interesting was go all the way down to Salesforce, which is second from the last, and you will see that their average base salary, look how high that is. It's almost $90,000, and the average additional payout is only 29,000. So total payout is $93,000. Now, again, there's never a right or wrong you know, solution here, but I think those are interesting numbers. What did you find interesting about those numbers? Type something in. What did you find interesting about those numbers? Give you a moment to type something in. What did you find interesting about those numbers? And then I'm going to jump into how do you put together a compensation plan for your salespeople? And if you're a salesperson, you're going to, fix, you're going to love this because it'll allow you to negotiate better when you're negotiating your salary. So what did you like about that? That was interesting. What about those numbers? Did you find anything shocking about those numbers? Let me know what you think. All I know is uh, I like Aptus. You're going to be looking them up afterwards, right? Who is this company that's paying so much money? Okay. So one of the things I find interesting is that the different compensations plans, some people and some companies are very generous with their plan. One of the things you didn't see on there, which I think is interesting, is you don't see the churn rate. Obviously, that's not in there. In other words, how many salespeople come and go? Because that's also another component, right? How many people come and go? So let me do this. Let me jump into a basic compensation plan. How do you put one together? And then again, as your comments roll in, we'll talk through it. And so I put together a compensation plan. 
Uh, let me see some comments here. It could be higher comp plan uh, was an uncapped plan and the lower organization has a cap plan. This is Tamia Woods. So Tamia is saying it could be that the higher comp plans are uh, once uncapped and the other one's capped. And what's basically saying is one has a limit, the other one doesn't have a limit. And let me just say this because I want you to uh, understand what I'm saying right now. If you have a capped compensation plan, you are an idiot. Yes. Cap compensation plans are the worst ideas ever invented to try to limit how much money a salesperson can make. And I'm going to show you why a capped compensation plan can hurt you and how an uncapped plan can help you grow your revenues quickly. So thank you, Tamir, for that feedback. That's great. Uh, commissions were so low, I'd assume they didn't work too hard. True. But again, this is an average, so it can't be everybody, right? You know, so, but I hear what you're saying, man. I hear what you're saying. So let's look at the compensation plan. One that you might put together. So let's put some numbers down first. Let's say that your average base salary, and I'm just using these numbers because they're easy to calculate, is $50,000. That's a good base salary to start out a average salesperson, right? Again, you can put the number higher or lower, whatever you want to do. But let's say also is that I'm going to assign this person a $1 million quota, right? They're going to get a $1 million quota. That's their base, right? So if I know that... I'm paying them $50,000 and it's a million dollar quota. The question is, how do I structure a compensation plan? Now, you know what's really shocked me is I've trained a couple of companies. Uh, last year, I trained a few companies and I asked them, I said, well, okay, tell me about your salespeople. Tell me about your high performers, low performers. And then on the, on the, when I found out what the low performers, who they were, I found out that they didn't have quotas. If you're not assigning somebody a quota, I think that's kind of, it's going to hurt them a little bit. Now, again, I like quotas. I don't like having one, but I know if I have one, I know I have a target to shoot for. If it's a reasonable quota, it's even better. If I can make money off that quota, great. But I think, you tell me what you think. Do you think giving or assigning a quota is a good thing? One, bad idea, zero. Love to hear your feedback. One, good, zero, bad. So let's go with that. Now, on the quota, uh, the compensation plan, how do we design one? I'm going to show you what I used to do. And because my, my goal in designing a compensation plan was to obviously motivate the salesperson to sell, but I wanted them to sell beyond their quota. So I wanted to keep them motivated. Again, a base salary keeps you comfortable, right? Just on the edge of making surviving, right? And then I want to put some carrots in front so they'll sell more, but then I really want to push them to sell that much more. And I'm explain why in just a bit. So let's say I put a quota, uh, compensation plan together that looks something like this. In fact, let me go to a new sheet. So I think I'm gonna need, so keep in mind, $50,000 quota, right? What, uh, $1 million quota, $50,000 base salary. So what if I create a comp plan that looks like this? I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five. And let's say down here is percentage of quota. I don't know if you can read that. Maybe I can zoom in on this. Percentage of quota, right? So that's the percentage of quota, right? So if they're 25% of quota, this is 50% of quota, 75% of quota, 100% of quota, which means they hit their million, and then it's 125% of quota, which means they shot past their quota. Now on this side, we're gonna talk about payouts, right? And let's kind of make them all the same. So 25%, 50, 75, 100, 125%. And this is a percentage of salary. This is how much we're going to pay them. So for example, let's walk through it. If I make, if the salesperson starts here, right? The salesperson starts there, right? Let's say they get to 25%. You can make a decision whether you want to start paying them some commission. Now, what I would do is I would never pay, and I'll just use a different color, I would never pay commissions on this. I would never pay commissions until I got to they got to 50% of their quota. So 50% of their quota, again, until they got to 50%, I would pay nothing. And so what I would do at the 50% of quota, then they would earn, let me just push the number like this, they would earn 25% of their salary, which means if they're making 25% of their salary, right here, it would be 12,500, right? 20, 25%. Remember, here's the number, 25% of 50K is how I got there, okay? I got my numbers right, 25% of 50K. And then 
they wouldn't make any more money. They'd still make that same amount of money until they got to the next level of payout would be at 75%. And once they got the 75%, I would pay them 50% of their quota. And now, by the way, this is total. This is not cumulative, like you keep adding them all together. Or rather, it is just one number. I'll explain that. 50% would be now I owe them $25,000 total. So it's not 12 plus that, it's 25 now. At this point, they've hit 75% of their goal. Now I'm paying that out, right? Now let's say, uh, let me see, if they hit 75, I can pay that. But now I can really accelerate if I want. When they get to 100% of their quota, what I can do is say, you know what? I'm gonna accelerate that, and now I'm gonna pay you 100%. And so I can now pay them 50K total right here. Now they've hit 100% of their quota. Now, bear with me. Now let's say they went to 110. And at 110, I'm gonna pay them, even at 110, I'm gonna pay them even that much more. It could be like 75,000. I think the number I written down, 110, it could be like 62,000. It could be 62,000 total. So 62 plus 50 is what they would make. And if you notice something, is that this begins to get a little exponential here on the actual payout. Now, the reason I do that is because, again, I want them motivated enough to sell at least half their quota, which is half a million dollars, right? In other words, I don't want to pay out anything unless you sell half a million because I'll lose money. But then I want to motivate you to get here. But then once you get here, I want to push you to what? Go past. And notice that I can actually add, after 100%, let me zoom in again, because after 100%, and this is important, let's see if I can get you in there. It won't zoom in for some reason. But anyway, once I get you in here, I want to make sure I start paying you more and more as you're getting 105%, 110%, 115 120 I want to start making sure that climbs up. And what happens is, in this zone past 100, people are motivated to sell, and they'll start selling more. And so what might wind up happening is that, at the end of all this, the person who had a $1 million quota, right, sold, let's say, 125% of their quota, so they shot right past it. They sold an additional 25% of their quota, which is 250, so it's 1.25 million, right? Which is great. Now, come next year, what do you think I did usually? Did I give them a $1 million quota again? No, I knew they could hit 1.2. So the following year, I would raise it to 1.5 or maybe be aggressive and go to 2 million. And every year I kept nudging them up. Now, this is the type of compensation plan people want to look at. So hey, tell me what you think. Love to hear your feedback. The point here is that right here is where you really want to start pushing them. You don't want to pay anything here because you'll lose money. But once they start moving and selling stuff, they get momentum going, then you want to accelerate the process. Let me know what you think of that. And then what I want to do now is, let me just erase some of this to make this a little clearer. And as you can see, this has that type of curve, right? You just want to make sure that they sell more. Now, what's interesting about this is that as they're moving up, let me make sure I, got, I still got you there. As they're moving up, they're making more money. And again, this starts moving up faster. Now, so one, I talked about three models, right? Base, commission, base plus commission. Those are the three ways you can pay out. Number two, it's how do you set up a, a compensation plan, right? And again, you want something that starts out almost at nothing, and then once they hit a certain point, I've, had, I've seen companies do, they only do payouts at 75. I moved it to 50 because I want the salesperson to start making a little money right away, right? At least at the 50% mark. So I've seen some people pull it back to 25 because they want the salesperson to make it faster, make money quicker. Because they start making a little bit, you get a taste, you get hungrier. So you have to slide this number. I like it at 50. But notice as I push this, I know I'm repeating myself, I'm accelerating how much they're making. So they're, they're making that much more. Now, there's four ways to really drive this type of motivation. So this, let's get to the bags of money that I started out with, right? I started out with bags, and I said bags of money. There's four, four ways you can motivate people. Now, the one I've already talked about here is this one right here. Uh, these I call accelerators, accelerators, right? And accelerator is what I just showed you. When you get to 50%, you really start accelerating how much commission and payout they get. So it's like you just push them, you know what I mean? Because they're like, once they start making that money, bah, they're gonna get in there, right? So that's one way of doing it. I love accelerators. Accelerators generate motivation, man. 
Or as Angel says, it's an ignition, man. You just go, right? Because you want to sell more. Now, from a management standpoint, when you have people who are motivated and you're not capping them, because as you notice, there's no cap. This thing can keep going. Because if they're making money, and I know what my cost of sales are, think about it. I got one person now selling, instead of selling one million, let's say they sell two million. Well, I'm gonna pay them their 10%, right? My cost of sales, whatever it may be. Because I know I'm just driving revenue, which is what I want, and I'm gonna still be profitable. To cap somebody, let's go with the capping. Let's say that you capped everybody at 100% of quota, okay? Let's go with that. At 100% of quota, you can't make more than, let's say, whatever that amount is, right? So at 100%, you can't make more than 100% of your salary. So at a, you, you sold a million dollars, that was your quota. You can't make more than your salary. So that's it, you're capped at 100. Because when you get to 100, 1 million, that's 100%. So they're going to give you 100% of your salary, which is 50,000. So you're making 50 base. You just made 50,000 in commission because you hit 100% of your quota. What do you think happens? What do you think happens when somebody hits their number and they're capped? If you're a salesperson, what would you do? I tell you what I would do. I would stop selling, right? Because why bring in more sales if I'm not getting paid for it? I might as well delay those sales and push them into the next year when this whole quota thing is reset again from zero. And this happens so much. That's why a capped program is not good. So by uncapping it, they keep selling it. If you cap it, I've seen salespeople hit their number. You know, you got it to me at Woods. They stop selling. And what happens is they, you know, I've seen people get to their number in about, I don't know, two, maybe three quarters. And in the last next three months, they pretty much don't do anything. They just sit back on their backside and not do anything. They, as Tamia says, they literally stop selling. Why sell if you're not getting paid for it? You guys got it, man. Again, why do it? So that's why I don't like cap programs because it demotivates people to sell more. Now, so accelerators, excellent way of driving motivation. Now, let's talk about something called spiffs. If you're familiar with spiffs, give me a one. A spiff is a special incentive. Now, let me tell you what a spiff is good for. A spiff is good for if you want a, a salesperson to sell something specifically or hit a certain target or bring in a certain amount of clients. For example, I can add a spiff. I'll say, I'll say let's, I'm going to use Tamiya, right? I say, Tamiya, I said, if you bring on 10 new clients this year and they each buy at least $50,000 worth of products, I'm going to give you a specific bonus. It's going to be, it's a $5,000 bonus, right? So, or let's say a thousand per, so it's a $10,000 bonus. So to me, I was thinking, I got to bring in 10 new clients, very specific, and they each have to buy whatever, 25, 30,000 worth of products or services. So now that hopefully will focus her on actually trying to achieve. That's called client acquisition. So that may be the strategy. I want client acquisition. So I'll use the spiff for client acquisition. Sometimes, I want to use a spiff to get a salesperson to sp sell a specific product. You've been selling to me an A, B, C, but now we have a new product, D. And you know what typically happens with salespeople? They sell what they know. So what I'll do is I'll say, just to use Tamiya again, Tamiya, I will pay you, you know, let's say a $10,000 bonus if you sell at least $100,000 of this specific product. And you're like, all right, well, that's it. Let's sell it. So again, a spiff can be used to guide you to get new clients guide the salesperson to sell a specific product, so forth and so on. So what I love about spiffs is that they're very targeted and they're very uh, good at driving behavior. I mean, you can even give somebody a bonus for, look, if you set up, or a spiff rather, if you set up at least 10 meetings every week, you will always get a $500 bonus. 10 meetings every week where the client actually shows up and we meet with the client, that's it, 500 bucks. Again, that's what a spiff is for. Now, let's go to bonus. Bonus is just, so this is really good when you wanna target something. You got, by the way, this to me is the sniper effect. If you wanna snipe something, that's what you use a spiff for. Now, up here we have, as you know, a bonus. Now, a bonus is, to me, it's whatever you want it to be. It's like a little grab back, right? If you see something and you want to, you know, again, motivate that behavior, reinforce that behavior, you give somebody a bonus. So to me, a bonus is like giving, giving candy. Once in a while, you just give out unexpected candy. So I really like what you're doing here just to show you how much I enjoy what you're doing and appreciate. I'm going to give you a bonus based on that. 
Now, a bonus could be every quarter or mid-year or at the end of the year. You decide. It's really a, this I put under just appreciation, right? But again, you could use it to drive behavior or reinforce the behavior. If you see somebody doing the right thing, you know, you want to reinforce the behavior. There's a book called The Greatest Motivational Principle, GMP, The Greatest Motivation Principle. And it says, always reinforce those behaviors you want a salesperson to have. And how do you do that? By rewarding them. Always reward behaviors you want repeated. The last one is one that's rare, but it's interesting. It's, it's called gain sharing. Now, gain sharing is basically if we all, if as a team, if we hit our sales number, if every salesperson, almost like bingo, if we go bingo, every salesperson hits their number, we're going to give you a percentage of whatever that total revenue is. It could be a small percentage, right? But it's still big money. So this really drives teamwork. You may want to use that. A gain sharing program may be used when, for example, if you're a salesperson and you're working with an SDR, a BDR, some inside salesperson, and you're also working with some other type of person, let's say on the technical side. So if you hit your number, you know, you as a manager could create some type of gain sharing where if the salesperson hits the number, the people that supported him or her will get a small percentage of that total revenue. That's kind of a gain sharing microcosm that you can use there, right? A little micro model. So these are different ways that you can incentivize people. Again, it really depends on how you want to use them, but they're powerful tools. My favorite, spiffs. Because again, they're very targeted on what you want something to happen or when you want something to happen. So there it is. So we've covered, I think, all three. We covered the, the first one, the three models, which we talked about. These are the three models, right? Then we talked about how you would set up a compensation plan. And again, no cap, accelerators are right here. And then last but not least, these are ways that you can use money to motivate. Now, again, there's other things that are motivators, right? Recognition, other types of rewards, things of that nature, and gifts, whatever it may be. So there's other things besides this. But when we just look at compensation for a salesperson to motivate them in the field, these are the different models. So now I hand it back to you and say, do you have any questions? Because that's all I have for you tonight. That was actually a lot, wasn't it? That was a lot. And so let me see if I missed anything. I don't think I missed anything. Got the accelerators. Uh, you know, I, I put some notes down that, you know, we look at money. I'll just give you this one last tidbit. Tell me if you agree. Uh, I was trying to, you know, just really kind of zoom out. Money matters, right? To a salesperson. Money does matter, but there's also the, what I call the benefits that you get of working with a company. For example, you got the healthcare benefits, right? Uh, you might have some 401k benefits. You might have some uh, um, matching benefits. So this is part of the package as well. And then within an organization, you also have what I call organizational benefits. The organizational benefits are maybe there's some they train you, you know, right? They, that's one thing. They offer training. They offer upward mobility. Upward mobility means you can move up in the company. So you got training, you got upward mobility, more responsibilities. So really, when we look at satisfaction within a company, it's really a mixture of all this. So I don't want to downplay that it's just money because it really isn't. That's, that's a big component. Again, but also what the company offers is benefits. And then also what's your career path? A lot of people want to know. You know, how can I grow within a company? How can I move up? You know, and sometimes they just want more responsibilities. And by the way, they, maybe they want to work on a great team, right? And they love that. They love the camaraderie piece. So all this is what you need to think about when you're hiring a salesperson. And if you're a salesperson, again, it's good to look at the money, but also look at what is the career path within the company. Maybe you want to be account manager, manager, director, VP, and then one day president of sales. And then over here is what type of compensation plans. And as you move up and you're in sales, you start moving into director slots and VP slots. Now we got, we talk maybe stock options with some of these public companies. So again, all this really is what you need to be motivated in selling. So anyway, I tried to do that quickly in about 40 minutes, which I think I did. So any questions on that? And Chad said, that was awesome. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate that. Like I said, it's, that's like drinking from a fire hose, just trying to absorb that information. Uh, let me see. I have experience with all but learned different understandings behind the compensation plan. I have had experience with all 
but learn different understandings behind the compensation. Yeah, each one's going to offer something different. Uh, great resources. Thank you to me for that. It was great. A nice motivator. Money's always a good motivator, man. It really is. And we talked about Slack people not, again, if, if there's no incentive to grow, then all of a sudden what's going to happen is literally people will stop selling. So again, no cap is the way to go. And any other questions on that? If not, I'm wrapping up early. I think this will be the fastest one I've done. Let me know if you're enjoying these live casts uh, and some of the topics you'd like me, me to cover on some of these. Because again, I got several topics, but sometimes I want to do what you guys want to talk about. Because uh, I think this one was generated from the last live stream where somebody said, what about compensation plans? How can we put one together? So hopefully that was very helpful. And on that note, I don't see any questions coming up. So I'm about to sign off and just enjoy my evening. Again, we're cruising into the 4th of July weekend. Have fun. Be safe.